Graham Harmon is a philosopher. He was named by Art Review Magazine as one of the 100 most influential figures in international art today. And there's some really important reasons for that. His philosophy, object-oriented ontology, is key to understanding a lot of contemporary art and thinking around contemporary art. So we all read The Third Table, which is an essay written by Harman for an exhibition in Germany called Documenta 13 in 2012. This is a great place to start with Harman and to start with object-oriented ontology. It does a really good job of condensing some of the ideas and putting them into layman's terms so they're easy, easy to sort of digest and understand. But if you want to go a little bit deeper, really a lot of it deeper, you should read Object-Oriented Ontology, A New Theory of Everything. This book is thick, and I don't mean length, I mean it's just dense with ideas. It's really a book that anyone who deals in the currency of metaphor or objects should read. So there's not much time here. I'm just going to cover maybe one idea, and it was brought up in the third table. That is the idea of the durability of objects. And what is an object? An object is something that can't be boiled down to its parts, and it also can't be expanded out to its ideas. An object lives in a third place. That's why he calls it the third table. One of the things he talks about is he talks about the Dutch West India Company. And the Dutch West India Company lasted for, I think, 200 years. And it started off with just a few ships, and 100 years into it, they no longer had any of the original ships that they had before. But we would still call it the same company, because it's a clustering of ideas and objects that come together to be the Dutch West India Company. It's still an object that persists in human consciousness. So that object has not died. It's still durable. It still exists, the Dutch West India Company. And... That's an idea that I think is really interesting. So how does that relate to my work and how does it relate to uh, the work of Nari Ward? So let's take a look at my piece and one or two of his pieces as well. This is a piece called Edit. I did this piece over the fall. It was an interactive piece in which I set up a situation in which the audience had to edit the piece. So on a table were 10 objects, all different shapes and sizes and surfaces. Each object had an image next to it. And the viewer was asked to edit one of the objects um, until there, were just, there was just one object left to finish the piece. So they were asked to take that object, log it, and then destroy the object. The piece ex explored ideas of the durability of objects whether or not the object disappears after we've destroyed it or whether or not it, it persists because of the documentation and because of the interaction that this group had with that object. It also explored ideas of sorting, how we sort things, how we decide which things can be in, which things uh, are out, um, which things can exist, and which things can't. One of the things I noticed was that it was a sort of natural response for viewers of this piece to start connecting this process to the way that we treat one another as humans, the way that we sort one another, the way that we discard one another, the way that we make decisions about who can be in and who can be, it has to be out. So I think that was a powerful thing. One of the artists that I saw in New York that really moved me was Nari Ward at the New Museum. I think his work also explores this idea of how we relate to objects, the stories that they hold, the sort of discarding of objects and the power that those objects still hold, even when they're no longer functioning for us. He takes all these discarded objects that have been just thrown out onto street corners or just thrown to the gutter, and he reassembles them and they start to take on new meaning. They start to resonate together to talk about issues of society, issues of wealth, issues of poverty, issues of capitalism and I think they're they they are a powerful reminder of the metaphors that are created by objects <laughs> 